is a SOLIDWORKS design project for my customized lens cap cover, 3D printed lens cap cover for my lenses. The idea is to design a lens cap that you can put a logo on or something like that that's 3D printable, that is parametric, which means I'll have some dimensions in there that if you change them, it'll change the whole size of the cap so it can fit big lenses and small lenses and different brands and all that kind of stuff. I have an idea for a design and I've done a lot of testing on that. I've, I've done some 3D printing and some prototypes and that type of stuff. And I think I've come up with the best design. So a lot of this will be just making it parametric and I'll show you how to design at the same time. If I went through all the design process in this video, it would be a really long video and it's already starting to get too long. So let's jump into it and design it. Okay, let's start by creating a new file. Start with an assembly. We're going to do this as an assembly. I'm going to change it to millimeters, grams, and seconds. And we'll save it. Control S. And we're going to save it as lens cap. Okay, now we have an assembly called lens cap. And we're going to put a sketch in the assembly. I don't do a whole lot of assembly sketching, but we're going to in this one. And we're going to do it in the top plane sketch and all this is going to be is a circle with a dimension right click drag upwards of 45.5 that's the inside of this lens right here and uh, where it actually connects that's going to be the adjustable part of it that way so it doesn't really matter what we make it now but um, we'll be able to adjust this and make the lens cap different sizes. All right, so now we'll make that construction and we'll exit that sketch. So this is going to be what drives everything. So now we're going to go insert, component, new part. This is actually right here is asking for the front plane. If you want to keep it lined up with your assembly, you need to select the front plane here. So we're going to do that. And now if you look down here, if we look at the top, where our top here is actually the same as the top here. So that's what we wanted. So we're going to add a sketch. I don't want that sketch. I'm going to go ahead and delete it. Exit. And we're going to go to the top plane. Sketch. And we're going to convert that and make it construction. All right, so now we have this sketch in this part driven by this sketch. So that's the setup we want. So I'm gonna go ahead and get out of that. And now we're gonna jump over to our part and start modeling from there. I like modeling in the part instead of in the assembly most of the time, unless I'm directly referencing things in the assembly. So anyway, one thing I wanna do to this that we didn't do in the other is we want to go ahead and make it millimeters, grams, and seconds also. Now we're going to go to top plane, sketch. We're going to do an offset of this. And we want to make that, let's just say 1.8, Just a little bit bigger than the actual inner diameter. Actually, I think I like it a little bit bigger than that. That's, what does two look like? Two millimeters. That's what we're going with. Okay. So that's two millimeters. That's the overall outer diameter of our lens cap. So now we'll go features, extrude. I want to make it mid plane. I like doing most things about the mid plane. And I think we're going to make this about three millimeters. Not even close. Eight millimeters. That looks good. Okay, now the next thing we want to do is put a groove down through this that the actual grabbers will, grabbers and slides will slide through. So, on the front plane, sketch. I'm just going to start drawing here. I'm going to be on this plane. 
it's going to be an undercut because see this way because the part's going to slide in there and get trapped which is what we want horizontal here go back to there okay i'm going to draw a center line about here i'm just going to make these two things symmetrical right there symmetrical now we have a part that is symmetrical about the center i want to make this a fixed dimension no matter what size the cap is 30.3 and we'll make this 4.2 and let's make this 60 there we go let's go ahead features extrude cut and we're gonna do through all on both and that was already pre-selected all right that's our slot that our grabbers are gonna slide in so let's go ahead and exit this save all to the pc and it'll be back in our assembly now let's create the slider so i go insert component new part and we're going to select the front plane again just to get started so i want to do two things one is change it to from inch pound seconds to millimeters grams and seconds and then put that reference sketch in there so we're going to go top plane sketch and then we're going to select this sketch and convert it okay i want to make sure i get the actual sketch not the sketch in here so it won't let me select it this way so let's go ahead and hit tab that'll hide the first part and now i can just select that and convert there we go and then now immediately select that and make it construction exit the sketch okay now we're in the same spot now we can shift tab and in assembly wherever your cursor is whatever it's over if you hit tab it'll hide it if you hit shift tab it'll make visible anything that was in that location so anyway exit the part and we'll open the part in part mode okay so there's our reference so here we want to create a sketch on the top plane Do the same thing here we're going to offset this select that offset and the other one did two millimeters this one we're going to do four be a little bit bigger it's a good starting point and then we'll start with a center line center lines and for construction are the same thing that just has that pre-selected here so same exact entity now i want to do a line here and a line over to there and then something like this now let's give this in dimensions so we want to right click drag upwards select the center line if we drag across the center line we get the symmetrical dimension and we'll make that 29.5 looks good it gives us a good clearance that's some, one of the things i've already figured out and this thing here will be 3.75 this here will be off of this dimension because i 
Well, come on. Wow, that's acting weird. There we go. Because I want it to stay a certain distance right here. And I think 4.5 is good. Gives us some good meat. I'm going to give this the same dimension. I'm holding shift down to dimension to the outside of that. And we'll make that. Let's try 18. That looks pretty good for now. Let's trim this up up here. I don't need that. I don't need that. I don't need any of that right there. And we're fully defined. Except I want to put a radius right here. So let's go ahead and do that before we mirror it. And let's try two millimeters. Looks pretty good. Okay. So if you're in a sketch and you have one center line and all rest entities, you can select all, control A, and then just hit mirror entities and it already knows what to do. So that's kind of a neat trick. Now we're fully defined and we're ready to go. Let's go ahead and give this some thickness. Let's go with three millimeters. Now let's save that, control S, and we'll exit it to go back to the sketch. Now we have a object that slides. It should slide through here, but as you can notice, it says it's fully defined. It can't be moved. Well, we didn't do anything. Well, when we create a part, it automatically defines it with an in place. So we're just going to delete that. And now we can move it around wherever. So what we want to do is we want to make this face and then control select this face and make them coincident. And then we'll select the right plane of this and the right plane of this and make them coincident. Now we have a slider that slides down through here. But I can tell I chose the wrong thickness. So, so I think that was supposed to be four, not three. So let's change that. We'll go to this. Edit. Whoops. That's not what we want to do. I'm going to go to here. And we want to go edit feature, not, not sketch. And make it four. See how that looks. That's, that's what we wanted right there. Now we have an interference here we need to take care of. So we made that 30 degrees or 60 degrees to that. Let's go ahead and do the same here. So let's go ahead and open that up. And we'll chop the corners of this with a chamfer. So go ahead and features, chamfer. Let's choose that and choose that. And you can see they're way too big. We know we are at four millimeters. So we'll go ahead and go four millimeters here. And then we'll make this 60. And you can see it's definitely going the wrong direction. We have the right distance, so I just need to flip this around and make it 30. And then uh, we'll do it right. I just had it the opposite way. All right, so OK there. Close that, save it, go back to our assembly. Now you can see we have some good amount of clearance there, but that's the clearance for this surface to the surface of that and this surface to the angled surface. Because both those have to have a little bit of clearance. Once that raises up off there, that'll be um, a decent little slide fit. That's one of the things I tested. And as you can see, this slides through there. So the next thing we want to do is make a channel for this for the catch and a channel for the spring. So let's do that right real quick. Let's go ahead and edit this part. We're going to do it right here in this assembly. We're going to select that surface, and hit sketch. We're going to convert the entities. 
start by drawing a line from the center line over to there. Escape out of there. And now we want to, because I should have started with the center line, because that's what we're going to be drawing about. Now we'll put the line, start putting lines in. So we're going to the bottom of the spring channel, go up, over, put our little catch in. That's where our catch is going to catch. And this will go all the way down to parallel with that and back over to there. All right, we're going to do some trimming. Trim that, trim that, there we go. Get rid of that, 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 and that. Okay, whoa, that's stuck down there. That was weird, undo that. Just go ahead and delete that entity and that entity. We should be good to go. All right, let's give this some dimensions. And these dimensions also, I want to come off of the outside of this. So when this diameter changes, it will move with it. That one's stuck to the center because it's going to just be a fill in part. So anyway, let's get this started. Well, we will make this and this collinear. So they'll always stay in line with each other. Right click, drag upwards. We'll give this a to figure out which one's which. It's this top one here. The bottom one is for the... Actually, I don't want to take the chance of going to the wrong one, so we're just going to exit out of here. We'll open this part up. Now we'll get back into the sketch and edit it there. Okay, now we're good. Right click, drag upwards. Select from here, shift select, top of that. And we'll make that just go 20. Okay. I notice a problem here already. I shouldn't have made these collinear. That needs to be on a different level here. We'll do the same thing here. Shift select the circle. Come on. Well, that's giving me trouble. Let's make that 16.5. And now we'll dimension this about the center line so we can do a symmetrical here. Make that 11.5. We'll make this. 1.75 and then we'll give this a let's give this an overhang of 1.2 ish there we go now this I'm going to go ahead and dimension it off this line but if you remember this one's tied to the circle so it will adjust also but that'll allow me to dimension the stroke basically that I have left We'll make that 7.7. .7. This will make it, let's go 12. So that's fully defined now and we can tweak these dimensions as we need. They're pretty much all parametric off of the diameter here besides the width dimensions. So let's go ahead and control A to select everything and we'll mirror. And there we go. Now features, extrude. And we're gonna go blind. That looks like we might have a problem here. Through all. We got points that aren't merged. Don't know why it does that sometimes, but we'll just drag it off there and pop it back down. 
Now let's try it again. There we go. Through all. All right, there's our geometry. Now let's go ahead and mirror this about the front plane. And we'll hit mirror. Okay. Okay. There is our channel. Let's see how that looks over in the assembly. Save it. Okay. We're getting somewhere now. Now this slides. It can slide in as far as this and it'll hit there. And then it can slide out as far as it wants and fall out. So we want to put a catch in there. Actually, before we put the catch in there, let's go ahead and put our engagement teeth in here. So that means we need to open up this part. And now on this surface, the engagement will happen right at this area here. So let's go ahead and start a sketch there. We will use that by converting it. So let's go ahead and do the center line thing again. We want to draw a line straight down here for this edge. We'll go ahead and trim the outside. So now we have our little half piece. And create another circle about the same center. Hook it there. Now we can trim that up. Okay. I think that's what our piece is going to look like. Let's go ahead and mirror it. We'll select all. Hit mirror. Looks pretty good. Let's give it a width. Try 18. That looks pretty decent. Now features extrude. And we got that same problem, I think. No, maybe not. Blind. No, we don't. Okay. Let's go three millimeters. That's already selected, so that looks good. So that'll protrude down into the lens, and now we need to put some teeth that'll grab onto the inside little thread portion of the lens. So we're going to do that on the right plane. Create a sketch. And they're going to be right up here at the top here. So we will draw a line out, back to the same line, and then close it. Do a center line about the midpoint and drop that on there. Now we have a symmetrical little tooth. Gonna make the width of it 0.7 and then let's make this. I don't want it to be 90, I want it to be a little bit less than that. Let's try 80. Looks good. All right, I think that's pretty good. Now this one, we want to go a revolve boss. And it's asking for something to revolve it around. We don't right now have anything in the center here, but there's these cylinders that actually have a axis here. So we can borrow that by going into the little view drop down here and say temporary axis. And you can see that pops these up. So we'll just select one of those for that. And then I think that gave it to us. There we go. It was on something else. So now it's going 360 degrees around. So we're going to give that a smaller, like 30. That's too much. Let's go 30. Let's try 
25, nope, 20, there we go, that looks good. And do direction two, 20 also, and hit enter. All right, there's our tooth. Let's create another one by doing a linear pattern of that tooth, which is already selected. And then the direction is that right there. And it's way down here, 10 millimeters. That was 0.7, so let's just go 0.7, and that'll be the same distance. All right, there's our teeth. Save that, Control S, and exit back to the sketch, back to the assembly. If you come into the assembly and you want to move things around and you can't, it might be because you're in part edit mode. Um, you can move other items, but the part you're editing, you can't. Okay, so the thought on this, let's let's name these things over here. If you select in the tree and hit Shift C, it'll collapse everything. And you see we have part five and part six. Let's just go ahead and give those names. So select it, select it again. It'll go to rename. I'm going to call this base. We're going to call this slide. Okay, now I can tell what those things are. So I still need a spring and I still need some catches. So the thought is, is this part will slide. There'll be a catch on here and this it'll be able to slide and squish and then pop open and get caught on that little nub there. So let's put it in there. So we we'll go right here. We will go edit part. Add a sketch right there. I'll take that, convert it. And now I want to start drawing off of here. So let's start by giving myself a little bit of distance there. Come off, back onto it, and put a little radius there and come back. That just puts us in tangent arc mode. And we're going to be about there. Let's go ahead and exercise this around a little bit. It's getting pretty close. Maybe something like that. I'm going to make this four and a half. 4.5, let's let it stick out, Two point eight ish see how that looks, um, let's go ahead and do an offset here, give it a thickness, definitely not 10 millimeters, 0.8, that's what I like. Add that on there. That's not going to be needed. All right. Let's go ahead and drag that around. Now I want to make it tangent. So let's go with that to that tangent. And let's do some trim in here. Well, first let's put a line up here. So I want this to be flat. All right. Let's do some trim in here. Trim that off. Trim that off. Trim that off, trim that off. And I think that's pretty good. Let's give this a, oops, a dimension here. 0.5. All right, it's looking pretty good. Give this a dimension. 15. That looks pretty good. That's fully defined. 
Let's extrude it. Now we're going the wrong way. Let's flip it around. Go through all. It'll be down to that bottom surface. There is our little catch. Let's mirror it over to the other side. So we'll take this and that plane. And you notice I'm working within the part here. I'm not using these planes because I want to keep parts as self-contained as I possibly can. You only go outside of the part and reference another part or the assembly when you have a purpose for that. Let's go ahead and now I hit mirror. Automatically puts it in there, hit enter. We're good to go. All right, so now we have a part that can slide. Whoops, we're in the part, so let's get out of there. They can slide and hit there. And it'll slide and hit there. And that will be well past the engagement point. Let's go ahead and get normal to the stop plane here. Okay. So now we have these two circles. So that circle is the teeth. That circle is the inside of the lens. So you can see we're well past engaged. And I'll give us some room to engage that. Push the spring in past. It needs to go past. Pan up here. Yep. You can go past quite a bit and hit that. And then it will go up here and engage into the thing. That's a pretty good stroke right there. I think we're good to go. I think I like that. Hit control S to save it all. Rebuild and save. Save internally, yes. All right, now we need a spring because right now this will just flop around in there. It will not try to return and try to hold itself out. So we need a spring coming off of here. So let's just go, let's put this thing in the fully extended area. Which control eight is normal too also, whatever you have selected. So if I select that, say I'm here and I wanted to go normal to that, you just select it, control eight. That's what I like to use. Okay, we're pretty much engaged there. Now we'll put our spring to go way past here so it'll always be pushing up against there. So let's go edit part. Grab this surface, sketch on that surface, and we're gonna start drawing our spring. So I'm gonna go about the center. So let's go ahead and put a center line in first. So I want to start with a part that just comes out of the surface here. So let's go ahead with a, I'm just going to put a circle in here. I'm going to put a line in here, which is convert entity and make those tangent. So that's how I'm going to start it. And now I'm going to go from there. Let's select there and go now over to here, it's going to be the outside, so it'll be bigger. Go back to the point and off, get a tangent arc. Select there, tangent off of there. It's going to be that an internal one again. Back to the point. And this one is going to be straight out this way, but I'm going to do that and then we'll Make it horizontal. And this looks like it needs to be stretched way out a lot though. I think I'm going way too small on all this stuff. Okay. Uh, 
Let's just work on this a little bit. So that and that is going to be equal. All right. We're going to hit trim for that. And now I'm going to do some offsetting. Offset about a millimeter. Let's just go ahead and do select chain. All right. That's my spring. So let's go ahead and select that or accept that. Draw a line in between this and this. And trim this up up here. Okay. Now we have a spring, but it needs to be a lot bigger than that. I do want this and this to be vertical. Now I want this to be symmetrical. So put the center line in there horizontal and select that, that, and that and say symmetric. Want that to be the same size as that. Equal. Now we're getting somewhere, I think. I think we're getting somewhere. So I want the outside to be limited. Dimension. Shift. Click that. And shift. Click that. And that did not work. I'm going to accept that and we'll just change it over here. Leaders, max. I want that to be nine. That gives us enough clearance. And now, yeah, we're getting pretty good here. I don't want this to go away, these internals to go away, so let's give them a dimension. Um, 0.8. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. Let's give this a dimension here from center to center. That will be our pitch, I guess. 0.8 ish. Hmm. Let's go ahead and tie this down from there to shift select there. I'll make that eight. That is it. But I want it to be engaged a lot more to begin with. We need to finish defining this, so looks like side to side's all we got left. Um let's go ahead and make this vertical with that. Now we have a midpoint we can play with. Midpoint. There we go. Fully defined. It's not nearly enough engagement there though. Let's go ahead and extend that and then we'll adjust some other stuff. Let's go ahead and extrude that, I mean. Looks like we got a pro oh, we got a part right here. Let's get rid of that. There we go. Features, extrude. There we go. Other way, through all. Boom. All right. Now we have a spring. But I want to adjust the length of this leg here. 18. I think that needs to be a couple millimeters less. So let's go try 17. Okay. That is engaging right there. I could be doing a little bit more though. All right, 
we're just going to extend the spring out a little bit. Five point eight, let's make it six. I think that's enough engagement. I don't know why I'm worried about this. I could just bring this up. Wow, you're probably yelling at the screen right now saying, just change this lower surface. Okay. So this, make this 16. That's a little better. Okay. I think I'm gonna use that right there. So that's our parts. A couple th other things we need to do real quick. We need to take this corner off because I can see that. I'm going to print this with this side down. And that's going to blob out there and cause a little interference here. So let's go ahead and take that top corner off. I'm going to open that up. And we'll add a chamfer. to there and there. We're gonna make it really small. We'll make it one millimeter to start with and flip direction. Yep, grab that one, flip direction. It makes it a little vertical cut off there is what we end up with because it's, that's 30 degrees. And we did 30 degrees off of that, so we offset it. Let's go 0 0.5. See what that looks like. I think that looks pretty good. Okay. Save. There we go. See, now we got some clearance there. The other one is this corner right there, too. It's going to be printed with that piece down also. So... We want to go ahead and do the same there. So let's go ahead and open that up. And say, we'll do it before the mirror. Put a little chamfer in there. There and there. We know it was 0 0.5 at 30 degrees. I want to look at the end of it and Flip direction. Yep. Flip direction. There we go. Okay. Go ahead and bring that mirror back. And it does not grab it, so we'll have to edit it. And then we want to add that chamfer in. There we go. Okay. Save all. Okay, one other thing is I know this is only going to need to go in. Let's go ahead and go normal too again. Where this can clear that. So that means this leg here can go up a little bit. Let's go ahead and look and see how much distance we got. We see we can take a millimeter out of that. I'd like to take that millimeter back. So let's open that up. Go ahead and see what is. So these two right here. So if we change that by a millimeter, we'll need to take it out of those two. So we'll go 19. Eleven, six point seven. There we go. Now let's look at this. 
normal to this. Now we're engaged. Okay, there's stop. We come back to there. We're definitely clearing. That looks like a good design. Okay. One other thing I want to do is add another one of these to the assembly so it is complete. So just control, click and drag a new one out. And then we'll do our moving it around and stuff. So we want to select that and that and make them coincident. I want to select this part, that. Now let's go ahead and go this right plane and that right plane, make it coincident and then wait here and then flip it. There we go. So now we have the other one in there. So that is our, let's save it, control S, save all. Rebuild and save. Okay. That is our finished cap. Well, actually, no, it's not. I want a chamfer right here. A little one, but a little chamfer. So let's edit that part. Chamfer. That right there. We're going to go one millimeter at 45 degrees. And I want to make a point eight millimeters. There we go. I like that. Save it again. Save all. Okay. That is the finished part. Now we can print that and pop it together and we hope it'll work. And then we can create a logo that has a thickness and I'm going to, the way I'm planning on handling this is you create a thickness, a logo with a thickness, and then in the slicer, you just set it on top of there and line it up. That way you don't have to edit the part every time. So you could, you should be able to download these STL files and then create your own logos, lay them on top here in the slicer and print everything with a material change in the middle of it. And I'll get into that here in a second. All right, let's see how the parametric works. So if I change this, let's change it to 50. Control B to update. Now it looks like everything moved and still works. See if I can go to 55. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. It's just this area in the middle gets bigger and everything else changes accordingly. Exactly what we wanted. Go ahead and change this back to 45.5 and hit control B to update everything. All right, so let's come up with a logo for the top of it. First thing I wanna do is look at the outside diameter that I got to deal with which is this right here, and that's 47.9, okay? So we'll say new part, millimeters, gram, second, do a top view, just put a circle in there, dimension it, 47.9 is what I said. We're going to Make that for construction. And now we want to bring in, 
on the top plane and select DXF drawing. I'm going to grab clearbean.dxf. This is a file of a logo for my son's company. He has a media company that does um, video and podcast, video podcasts and such. And I'm making him some lens caps. All right. So when you bring in a DXF, you want to unselect import as reference and hit finish. And it'll bring it in there, and it's going to be huge, I believe. Yeah, very, very huge. Let's make it... Um, scale entities. About... Let's just go about the center here and make it 0.02. Pretty small. Zoom in. Start there. Way over there. Okay. So I'm going to move entities. Let's select everything. Move there over to there. Zoom in. Just using the scroll wheel to zoom in. All right. We're getting close. So let's go ahead and all move again and we'll go from there to there and now we can scale it from there all scale about the center and this time I want to make it point 0.1 all right point that's good in there. 0 0.25. 0 0.23. That's pretty good right there. Select all, control A, and we'll move them again. And just select in a point out here so I can get this about to where I want it. Doesn't really matter actually. We're going to just extrude this and then lay it on top of there. So this circle is just for reference in size. But one thing I do want to do is all these, all this is pretty small. We're going to print this with a small nozzle, but still it's all pretty small. So I want to offset it a little bit. So let's do that to get a little, um, make this size in here a little bit better because it's going to get closed up a little bit by the thickness of the material anyway. So let's go offset. Construction geometry is going to be the base geometry and we're going to go 0.1. Let's see what that looks like. All right, right there. I'm going to go 0.12. I think that's pretty decent. Oh, one five. What does that look like? That looks pretty good. Yeah. So let's go ahead and go around the whole thing and do that. Make sure that doesn't cause any problems with any of them. We'll have to come back and do the inner pieces as... offset to the inside. All right, and now we're going to do offset again, reverse direction, choose that, 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 and that. Whoops, and that, and that, there we go. Okay. Now we go features, extrude base, and this is going to be about 0.12 layer thickness, 0.12 times, let's give it at least 
give it five layers to 0.6. And now it's going to want me to select contours because it can't figure out what to actually extrude on this. So I'm going to choose that and then you got to choose all the centers. All right, there we go. So there's our logo that we're going to put on lay on top of this. So save it as clear bean logo. And now I want to make all these STL files that we can bring into our slicer. So we'll, we will export as. If you're using an older version of SolidWorks, you just have to do a save as and then choose this. And I'm going to do this as a clear bling logo STL export. Okay. Now I'm going to go back over to our lens cap and open up each part and export them individually. So open this and you don't have to actually save it to the hard drive as a part. You can just go export as STL base at lens cap export. Need one of these. We'll duplicate it in the in the slicer. So file, export as, slide. Yes. Okay. Now we'll bring those into the slicer. Let's bring our files in. This is standard. The generic PLA Ender 3S1 Pro set up here and I'm just going to open files and bring all three of these in. I'm going to select that and lay it lay it down using this surface. Take this And do the same thing here. And then do the same thing here. Did it the wrong way. Now do the same thing here. Okay, now to bring this up to the level of the surface of this, we just want to select the part we want to lay on top of. If you select scale, you can see in the Z, it's eight millimeters. So that's what we want the bottom of this to be. So now we just move this. It's at the bottom of this at eight millimeters. Whoops. Drop down model needs to be turned off. There we go. Now we can just move it around until we're happy with the way it, where it is. And I know I want this to be 90 degrees. So let's go ahead and do that. And say, darn it. Control Z to undo that. I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees. So let's rotate that blue portion of it to 90 degrees. There we go. Now move it. I think that looks pretty good right there. Now you can see it's laying right on top of there. Now let's put this in place. 
go ahead and put it about there. Right click on it, hit multiply, and hit one, okay. Now we're just gonna move this one around. And I just like to have it rotated the same as the other one. So we'll do that one at 90 degrees also. Whoops, that's not what we want, Control Z. There we go. Okay, now I think we have it. Now, let's make some changes here. Since this is a pretty intricate little logo here, we're going to print it with a 0.25 millimeter nozzle. And if you need help on changing your nozzle, I have a video for that. I'll link that here or here. Never can remember. And you can see how to change your nozzle and print it at a higher quality. That'll allow you to get more detail. Um, so to do that in Cura, you need to change the line width. So we're gonna make that 0.25. And you'll notice all this other stuff changes to match it. So we'll do that and we'll change the layer height. We're just gonna go 0.12. It just has to be less than the, the nozzle. So 0.2 would have worked, but uh, I'm gonna say keep changes because I just changed that. Um, and that'll make it just a little bit nicer of a part and this a little bit cleaner. So anyway, now we'll want to go and do some support material. I want to go to, oh, infill. I'll make that. Let's make that 10% and then we'll make the build plate adhesion skirt. I like that. And support, when I say generate support, I like tree for this one. And the one thing I really wanna change is this XY support distance. So let me show you what it does here. We're gonna go ahead and slice this. And we will preview it. And you can see down here how all this tree support is going up under here. I want to keep that from happening. So I also want to keep that from happening too. So let's do both of those. So the first one down here is to make that come out more, we're going to change this X support X Y distance. We're going to make that a full one millimeter and slice it again. Now you see it it moves it inward a little bit. So we're not getting as close to up in the groove here. And this will all come out really easy now. And it won't be dragging as much up in this corner here where most of the friction is on this slide. So um, you could probably even make it a little bit more. Let's try 1.2, see how that looks. I like that. Okay, so we're going to leave that like that. And now to get rid of that, which actually it already did, but um, everywhere, just where it's touching the build plate, we'll get rid of that. It won't stack on top of each other. There we go. Now we have no support there and we have just the support we need and around here. So hopefully all these overhangs will work just fine. We will see. So one other thing we want to do while we're here is find out what layer we need to change filament on. And that's the last layer to print, 67. So if we go over here, I want to 
go to extensions, post processing, modify G code. And this is where you add all your scripts. So I want to add a script called pause at layer height. I like that one better than the filament change. But I use BQ. I've had problems with the Marlin before, but um, so I use a BQ and we're going to use 67 is what the layer height was. And I want to park the print head over to the side at zero. 190 is good. And I'll push it all the way to the front. And then retraction. We're going to go ahead and go 20 millimeters because we're going to just take the filament out. And the standby temperature, we're going to leave it at 200. That way everything stays warm. And it won't pop off the plate and our, we'll be ready to load the new material. You just need to stay around so you can catch this though. All right, so we'll close that and we'll slice it again. I'm going to double check my layer 67. Yep, that's it. Okay, now we can save this and load it on the printer and see how it prints. I'm going to create a Dan Designs logo too. I saved that, I saved the file off. I already have my reference circle in here. And I'm going to put in my Dan Designs logo. Okay, so we'll select the top plane. We'll hit DXF. We grab that same DXF that I did when I did my knife handle and bring that in. If you haven't seen my knife handle video, check that out. Let it finish. Let it bring it in. Okay. And now I'll just scale this down. Way over there. Okay, move entities. Okay. Now we will just move this to the dead center. Start scaling it up. Two. Let's see here. That looks pretty good right there. Let's center it up better. Control A, move entities, and we'll just, whoops, Control A, move entities. Select out here and just try to center it up the best you can. Needs to be moved a little bit to the left. All right, I think that looks pretty good. Well, let's extrude it. Point six millimeters, like that. Now I got to select our contours. Those right there. All right. There we go. Let's save that. 
export it as an STL. All right, so now we just go ahead and delete this one and drop on the Dan Designs one. And to take this side of it, like that, move it up eight millimeters. Just center it up here. That looks pretty good. Slice it. Preview and make sure it's still 67, 67, 68 starts the logo. We're good to go. All right, let's print those and see how they come out. I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. If you'd like to check out the full project video, you can see that over here. If you'd like to see more SOLIDWORKS tutorials, you can check those out over there. If you liked it, consider subscribing and we'll see you in the next video.